Welcome to this video where we'll explore messages the Father Gobi received from our Blessed Mother. And one of these messages from our Blessed Mother was a prophecy that was realized this year in 2022. Now before we start, a little bit about Father Gobi. He received, as I mentioned, messages from 1972 and the book that we'll look at has messages received all the way from 72 to the end of the 90s. And it's really a wealth of information. And I have to confess that I really have not looked at this book until recently. And I'd like to share with you a little bit about the messages concerning Russia. Because Russia, of course, is in the news. And Russia also is at the forefront regarding the prophecies at Fatima. So let us begin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. The first message I'd like to read is from June 12, 1978. And again, this is from our Blessed Mother. Hundreds of millions of my poor children have thus been educated from childhood to do without God. And often they are good and generous children, though deprived of the true light, which alone can give joy and hope to their lives. Think of all the great suffering that covers this immense land. I am sure that what I already foretold you at Fatima has truly come to pass. Russia has spread its errors throughout the whole world. The Lord has made use of godless nations to chastise the Christian peoples who have left the path marked out by my son, Jesus. And Father Gobi was in Hong Kong, China at the time of this message. And that was a land that our Blessed Mother was referring to. Also to note the year 1978, she is saying at this point that Russia has spread its errors throughout the whole world. And it's four years prior to the letter that Sister Lucia F Fatima wrote, saying basically the same thing. In 1982, the year after St. Pope John Paul II was shot, Sister Lucia penned a letter saying the errors of Russia have spread throughout the world. The idea of spreading the errors through the whole world, this is often mistaken as Russia invading other countries. It's very unlikely that Russia is going to invade the West. You won't see Russia invading France or England or Italy. The errors of Russia is really the chastisement, and that's what has already spread. Indeed, we're in a situation where Russia itself is beginning to, if they have not already, they're beginning now to discard this cloak of atheism, which has persisted and actually has made a foothold in Russia to begin with. Let me turn to another message from our Blessed Mother, and this is March 25th. 1984. Today I ask it anew. I ask once more for consecration to my Immaculate Heart by all men. I ask it first of all, Pope John Paul II, the first of my beloved sons, who is carrying it out in a solemn way on the occasion of this feast, after writing to the bishops of the world to do this in union with him. Sadly, the invitation has not been welcomed by all the bishops. Particular circumstances have not yet allowed the express consecration to me of Russia, which I have asked for many times. As I've already told you, this consecration will be made to me when bloody events are already in train. I bless this courageous act of my Pope, who has wished to entrust the world and all nations to my Immaculate Heart. I welcome it with love and gratitude, and because of it, I promise to intervene to greatly shorten the hours of the purification and to render the trial less severe. And this is a prophecy 
a message again to Father Gobi from our Blessed Mother that has come to fruition in this year, 2022. She predicted, as I've already told you, the consecration will be made to me when bloody events are already in train. And the consecration was made on March 25th, 2022, a month after the war between Russia and Ukraine started. I'd also like to point out there is another prophecy by a stigmatist that lived in Rome. His name was Antonio Ruffini, and he was born in 1907, and he lived for to the age of 92 years. He predicted when the consecration to, of Russia to our, our Immaculate Heart of Mary would be made. And at the time, he made the prediction in 1990. Of course, Pope John Paul II was presiding. And he predicted that it would not be the current pope. And it would not be the successor to the current pope. But it would be the one after that, which would be Pope Francis. And indeed, he was the one who made the consecration in March 25th, as I mentioned, 2022. I'd like to point out also that Antonio Ruffini, he is not known for a list of messages, although this one is a message that has received a lot of notice. But as regard to him, Pope Pius XII, he had a chapel built at the spot where Antonio Ruffini received the stigmata. And I think that tells us something about how Antonio Ruffini was viewed by the Vatican. So I'd like to give you another reading. This one's from May 13th, 1987. My request for Russia to be consecrated to me by the Pope, together with all the bishops, has not been accepted. And thus she has spread the errors to every part of the world. You're living in a humanity which has built up a new civilization atheist and anti-human. There is no more love, there is no more respect for life and for the goods of one's neighbor. The flames of egoism and hatred are extinguishing those seeds of goodness which are still springing up from men's hearts. The poor are abandoned, the little ones are ensnared and fed with the poisoned food of scandal. Young people are betrayed and led into premature experiences of evil. Family circles are being profaned and destroyed. How great is your desolation? How dense is the darkness which wraps around you? What an abyss you have fallen into. And this message, of course, confirms a lot of what we're seeing in our world today, unfortunately. And... It also again confirms that Russia was not consecrated back in 1987. In this message, the next one was in Fatima, Portugal, May 13th again, this time 1990. And it confirms the message we've just read. Russia has not been consecrated to me by the Pope, together with all the bishops, and thus She has not received the grace of conversion and has spread her errors throughout all parts of the world, provoking wars, violence, bloody revolutions, and persecutions of the Church and of the Holy Father. Just as a reminder to put in context when this was said, this was said before the year 1991 when the Soviet Union announced its dissolution and countries that lived in the Eastern Bloc under Soviet domain, they began to receive their independence. And it's important to note in these messages and warnings concerning chastisements that the chastisements are often softened, just like they were in Nineveh, the time of Jonah, so they are today as well. So they're softened often by the prayers, 
and the sacrifices of the faithful. So I mentioned earlier that Russia will probably not invade Western Europe. That is highly unlikely. There have been prophecies regarding the invasion of Western Europe, in particular Italy and uh, France. I'm not saying that those prophecies were not accurate. In other words, that they truly were not given at that time by our Blessed Mother, by our Lord. But what I'm suggesting is that just as one of the messages said, because of the entrustment, not the consecration, but the entrustment that Pope John Paul II did in union with the bishops to our Blessed Mother as Mother of God back in 1984, just as our Blessed Mother said that that will allow us to avoid the most severe part of the trial and the, it will shorten the length of the trial that is yet to come. That is what's happening. And that may be one event, it may be a very large example, but there are others. Others where people, perhaps not even known, are praying and sacrificing in order to receive God's mercy. I mentioned that it's unlikely that Russia will invade Western Europe. And the question may be, well, how do we know this? It's because the errors of Russia have already invaded Western Europe, just as our Blessed Mother has said in 1978. And as Sister Lucia Fatima confirmed with her letter in 1982, if you look at the individual nations, you look at Catholic France, it lies in ruins, it's decimated. Look at Catholic Spain. There's a government that wished to tear down the largest standing cross in the world that stands above the graves of those who have perished in the Spanish Civil War. It has betrayed the legacy of St. James the Apostle. And Catholic Spain has nothing to worry about regarding an invasion of communism when it has such a government. And look at Italy. Catholic Italy's churches and cathedrals, they stand like bones of a carcass the Catholic faith. In Germany, those who are shepherds of the faith, who should be guardians of the flock, they themselves are raising the flag of the errors of Russia high upon that poor land. And Ireland, Ireland which was once known as the island of saints. Where are your saints today? Now with the world in such a state and only getting worse, when the victory does come, the restoration of the church, the triumph of the Immaculate Heart, it will be under such conditions where it will be obvious that such a victory can only occur if it came from God. I'd like to end with a quote from Servant of God, Luisa Picaretta, whose beatification we wait with patience and trust. Did the same not happen in the redemption? Sin abounded more than ever. Only a small group of people was awaiting the Messiah. And in the midst of this group, how many hypocrisies, how many sins of all kinds, they were often idolatrous. But it was decreed that I was to come upon earth. In the face of our decrees, all evils 
cannot prevent what we want to do. We are glorified more by one act alone of our will than we are offended by all the evils and sins committed by creatures. Because our act of the will is divine and immense, and in its immensity it embraces all eternity, all centuries, it extends to all. I'd like to leave you with a little bit more information about Father Gobi and his book that we were just looking at, To the Priests. Father Gobi did not receive apparitions from our Blessed Mother. He received locutions, which are communications that are like an internal hearing. You hear the voice of God or Blessed Mother inside of you. I mentioned early on in the video that I just started looking at this book. In fact, I purchased a book about 20 years ago, and I never looked at it until recently where I became familiar with some quotations out of the book, and I found them very compelling. So I started looking at them. And the reason why I bring this up is that St. John of the Cross teaches that locutions are perhaps the least reliable type of communications, that is, supernatural or spiritual communications. So the book has an imprimatur, and definitely Father Gobi provided much example of producing fruit during his vocation by establishing the Marian movement of priests. I wanted to give you a little background on Father Gobi, and I may elect to create additional videos as I find material that I think would be of interest. As always, I'd like to thank you for watching, and I hope you found this interesting, especially in light of the events that are occurring today. And as always, God bless you. Oh God.